All right, boom. So we here with my guy, Damian Mathis, the creator of all these phenomenal works that you see right here in front of you, or the creator of all these phenomenal works you see behind him, but some of the most asked about pieces in this exhibit. So we gonna dive a little bit into it. Um, you know, the oak tree, you know, works that's going on here. So uh, talk to me, you know, the name is the oak tree, you know, on Instagram. So I want to know about that, you know, before we dive into these pieces, I feel like, you know, it all connects. I mean, I feel like most trees, probably the only thing on earth that holds a lot of knowledge. They've been around for, can you hear me? Yeah. So longer than we have. And I feel like they've seen more things, more seasons, more years, more time mm -hmm. than we can possibly ever imagine. Right. Stuff that stays still, I feel, sees more than anything because all you can do is look, all you can do is feel, all you can do is whatever. So I feel like as a tree, you grow. Mm -hmm. You know everything. You know all. You know your space. You know how you're going to grow. You know what's going to come. You know how you're going to bounce back after that last season. So mm. I want to talk, call myself the oak tree. And I have a love for trees because they, I don't know, they, they, they part of us. Mm. Like, good, good way, bad way, however you want to explain it, it's in our history. So we got to embrace it. Yeah, I think it's uh, dope, you know what I mean, to go along with that, you know, with um, you using the wood, you know, for your pieces you know, that you, you know, create. So we got this first piece right here, LeVar Burton. So um, what made you, you know, wanna create, you know, LeVar Burton, what was his influence, you know, over this, this you? This our, our scarceness in our own history. Mm -hmm. like, I love that you did this exhibit because half of these people in here, I feel like a lot of people our age, younger, older, whatever, we don't even know. Mm -hmm. So it's, as artists, as curators or whatever, we realize we got a voice now, we got some power, we got some type of representation for our own knowledge. Mm -hmm. Here we are with our art, like I did. We, we all grew up on him. We all know what he's about, we all know what he stood for, we all know that he did that in a, in a way that like, probably before 20, 30 years ago, like it was taboo. Mm -hmm. It was basically a death sentence for a black man to be that smart. And I feel like he, he did it in a way where he he did it. I don't know, like, it, it's, we, we have to give him props. We gotta right. give people their flowers before they die. Mm -hmm. So that was my flowers for him, like, just putting them out there, like, we can't forget about people like this. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't wanna be forgetting about, you don't wanna be forgetting about, but people who really dedicated their lives to knowledge and learning and so forth, mm -hmm gotta put them out there. Like you gotta put them as big as you can or whatever. And that's what I, I wanna do. I feel like that's my that's my life call. So I can't ignore it. I can't ignore it no more. So I feel like whatever comes out, that's how it's gonna come out. I just I guess I um, articulate things differently mm -hmm. in a way that I can physically have them become what they are. Right. So what kind of feedback have you gotten, you know, from the LeVar Burton piece? It's more so, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily feedback, I would say like, I get more reaction out of people. I get more um, like that, that shock and awe, like they, like they forgot about it. They was mm -hmm. just like, like, dang, like I didn't realize he was that important. So um, with this, it just, people kind of, when I put it together like this, people kind of like seen it all together. Like they made that, that one big picture of everything you've been thinking, mm -hmm. feeling or whatever, you put it in one. Mm -hmm. So to make it more minimal, but it can be complex in the same nature. I can make it. So uh, there's so many different things, you know, uh, and before we move to the next piece, well, now nah, I'll talk about that with the next piece. But, you know, so right here we got Reading Rainbow. We got Roots. You know, we got Star Trek. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, what I like about it is the shows the complexity, you know what I'm saying, of what we can do with our talents. You know, for one, he was able to influence an entire generation to read, you know, and love reading and, like, you know, take some responsibility and, you know, making other people read, you know, and get some information. But then you got um, Roots 
which is about ancestry, but then you got Star Trek, which is like futurism. Mm -hmm. You know, so it shows like the polar, you know what I'm saying, like uh, energy, you know what I mean, that we can, you know, utilize our artistic mediums and measures for our gifts and our talents. So, and I like that you even do this where you include, you know, all of this, you know, in one piece. You know what I mean, it's a, it's a entire story, you know, within it, you know, so that's, that's, that's powerful. You know, what made you begin to, um, start doing, you know, that, you know, including all these pieces into one. Everything to me is a challenge. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a learning process. Of, it's that's how it comes. With wood, wood is so unforgiving. If I cut wrong, I gotta start all over. Mm -hmm. So this was one piece. This is probably my only piece that's not one piece simply because I didn't do it right the first time and I broke it. Mm -hmm. So that was my lesson to be like, all right, I can push that bar but I gotta, it gotta make sense. Like, it gotta make sense to push your bar. Like, you gonna push that bar, you gotta have a plan. Yeah. So, and this teaches me every time I do it that I gotta have a plan from start to finish before I even start. Mm -hmm. Or, that's gonna happen again. But sometimes we need that to remind us that, I mean, we are fragile. We right. are like breakable. We are like, we can be broken or whatever the case may be, but can you fix yourself? Can right. You, can you make it work or whatever cake may be? So yeah. my work is a, a self-reflection. I guess like my own wants and desires, if I if I will say that. Like it's you dig it. it. It's just one of those. Like I feel you though, because uh you know it's a lot of self-discovery. You know that mm -hmm. comes through creation. You know as a as a creator. You know um of even you know this art this gallery. You know was like a it was a space of self-reflection as I was putting it up. But then, you know, sometimes you find out things that you didn't even know you had. Like, I've been calling myself a gallery curator because I've been creating these mm -hmm. spaces, you know, that you've come to. But this was the first one of this magnitude that I was able to put together that had this type of impact. And um, it was so many different things I freestyled, mm -hmm. you know, along the way in the process. You know, but there are so many things, you know, that were reiterated to me through this creation process or shown. So I, I totally get that and understand that. And I hear that a lot from other artists, you know, whether it's, you know, you discover your vulnerability, you know, through your art or discover some strengths or you just learn life lessons, you know, like, you know, like, you away from it. Yeah. Okay. It's destined for no matter how it's done, you got to get it done. Right. So, yeah. So this piece right here behind you, you know, um, we got Jacob Lawrence and one thing about Jacob Lawrence, you know, while I was at Winston-Salem State, I had a professor by the name of Dr. Bell. You know, and um, when I entered Dr. Bell's class, you know, well, first I had to sign up, you know, sign in to be in his class. He was already full. So I signed, you know, to be in his class. I had to come to him directly. He said, why do you want to be in my class? I said, someone suggested it. They said that you were a very powerful teacher and that, you know, we'd connect. He was like, all right, cool. What's your name? Terrence Walker. Terrence Walker from where? I said, from Jacksonville, North Carolina. He said, you ain't from Jacksonville. Where were you born? I said, Wilmington, Delaware. He said, Mr. Walker from Wilmington, Delaware. So when I come to class, he would say that if I was on time, if I was late. So, you know, so, you know, but nonetheless, it stuck with me. You know what I mean? It made me remember Dr. Bell. And one of the other things that he took time to do was get to know um, his students. So he asked me, what do you do? I said, I'm an artist. So I guess he assumed visual artist and he introduced me to Jacob Lawrence. So I began to study Jacob Lawrence, you know, and as I, you know, I didn't even, uh, right away jump into, now nah, I do music. Mm -hmm. Now when he began to talk to me about Jacob Lawrence, I just sat and listened, you know, and then told him I did music. Nonetheless, there were so many things I studied about Jacob Lawrence. So even when you sent me that you was creating a Jacob Lawrence piece, I was hype. I was like, nah, you gotta bring that because I've never seen anybody recreate anything Jacob Lawrence, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, but it was, it's a powerful thing about Jacob Lawrence because he had these full series, the migration series. So what I was going to say about what you do is like you, you, you are able to capture everything in. You have a series inside the piece and then we have other people that create these series. You know what I mean? So I, I, I love that about that. But what made you, I mean, of course you were artists, you know, so you tapped into black artists on a different level. But what made you choose Jacob Lawrence? With, with me being an artist, my thing is like, I have to record our history. No matter if it came before us, or if it was after us, or whatever case may be, he's an important figure to our scheme, mm -hmm. period, off the bat. So, while I was going through school, 
I came across Jacob Lawrence. At first, I was like, eh, because I didn't understand his, like, well, art, you got to have an appreciation for it. No matter if it looks ugly to you or whatever the case may be, you got to see why they did that. Mm-hmm. Until I saw why he did that, I was like, man, oh, 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 why am I studying him or whatever the case may be? And I was like that about a lot of artists. But as I went on, I started to see, like, they was really going against the grain mm-hmm. and doing everything they were supposed to, even though they didn't even know they were supposed to be doing it. They didn't right. it. It was destined. So I feel like him doing it, we probably wouldn't even have known about the, the great migration if it weren't for artists like mm-hmm. him. It's just like when I, I went to war and so forth, you got people out there that sketched the war and so forth. Mm-hmm. He did the same thing. We were going through a whole war. Mm-hmm. So I had to, I had to make sure people remember that we went through this phase, we went through this phase in life and so forth. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, I don't know, it's just something that like, it's, it's a piece of it. Mm-hmm. And I just gotta put it out there like, like we, we're all close and I feel like the little pieces we put out there gonna help somebody else. So, As you um, studied Jacob Lawrence, what were some of those important things that stuck out to you? So one of the things that stuck out to me, uh-huh. you know, was I saw that he, he called his work dynamic cubism. Mm-hmm. So that was something that, and it stuck out to me because it sounded cool. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's I was like, like, like all right, cool. So I had to check it out. You know what I mean? Myself, you know? And so as I studied that, it was like, all right, it was about his imagery. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And this type of shapes that he used and the color he used to not only tell his story, but make his story stand out, make okay. it be important. I mean, and you got pieces of it, you know, up there. And, and, it's, and it's really dope, you know what I mean? But so that's one of the things that stuck out to me and was like, I began to like even incorporate that more in my music. Like I was a lyricist mm-hmm. and I was focused on bars and metaphors. But then it was like, nah, there's a greater way to paint this picture, mm-hmm. you know, with detail, you know, and stuff like that. And that was something I learned from Jacob Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, Jacob Lawrence, you know, like stuff like that, like it's, it's just, it's just the, 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 the process in itself. Like I, I look at it like every artist is going to be done like this. Mm-hmm. This is me solidifying with myself that I've learned enough to remember him. Mm-hmm. I've learned enough to remember people that influenced me. And I feel like once I get to that point and I can put it back out there, mm-hmm. another person will learn another way. Another way. And it just be all these different type of ways. And it's, it's going to come back. It's yeah. going gonna, it's, it's gonna to become what it is. But I've done artists like, uh, I'm, he's the first male of the series that I've done. Okay. It's crazy because when I went through school, we learned more about the females than we did about the males. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like, you know, that's kind of like backwards and so forth. But in a way that, uh, in a way that it, it just, we, we just got to right. go through it. Like, like uh, I've done artists like Alma Thomas. Uh, Augusta Savage, artists like that, like that, way before when, like way before even color TV, they was out here colorful. Mm-hmm. So they was out here just doing it just because it was them. Like they weren't doing it for no attention or whatever the case may be. It's just what they say that in the world. Mm-hmm. So and I feel like if we didn't have phones and so forth, or whatever, what would we be doing? Mm-hmm. What you gonna be doing that's gonna make yourself happy? Right. It's gonna make you feel like you you gonna wake up every day. You got some work on yourself. Mm-hmm. So it's little things like this where it's like I wake up every day because it's like it's in me that I right, the artist that's coming after me they have to know about him. They have to they have to come up to that like it, there's a certain level like that we leave for the next generation. Mm-hmm. So he left when he left for us, and I'm gonna leave with. I'm leaving for the next generation, like, and they're still gonna remember who came before. So right. I got some catching up to do, but it's worth it. For sure. I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to go through it or whatever stress of it is. Mm-hmm. I'm just willing to do it. So there are plenty of other artists that I learned about, but until it clicked where it's like, this is who they are, mm-hmm. that's, I'm just gonna keep, it, it's gonna be, ever revolving knowledge until I get to that, that yeah, point. Make them just as mainstream as the that. Michelangelo's and Picasso's mm-hmm. and all that. Oh, that's another point too. 
growing up, we mostly learned about white artists. Right. People that really ain't, they really ain't changed their minds. Cause they ain't really weren't going against nothing or whatever. They just kind of was just those people doing that at that time. Mm -hmm. But when you got pain behind something, mm -hmm. you got that emotion, when you got all that stuff that a lot of people don't get more, mm -hmm. that's where the that's where the true expression comes from, the art and so forth. Like mm -hmm. you, you can't put a price on that. Like you mm -hmm. can't put a price on that to, cause that's I don't know. It's just to even in that time period to even go against the grain and paint what was going on, who mm -hmm. knows? I feel like a lot of his work, other artists' work, we probably never see. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't no cameras like that back then. It wasn't no, like, no catalogs or whatever. Mm -hmm. They barely even got any, any shows or anything that's, I guess, uh, Mainstream or had yeah. any, like, real notoriety. There's a, yeah. um, a series or a documentary or show on HBO now about black artists and black curators mm -hmm. that I haven't finished um, yet, but it, it was really cool. You know what I mean? Just to see like how the idea of the black curator, you know, operated, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. But what I think is really, uh, I guess, non coincidental, you know what I mean? But, you know, real, real about, you know what I mean? Jacob Lawrence creating the migration series was a, uh, there was the birth of the Renaissance, you know? So in that, and that's part of the migration, you know, because you got, now you got numbers when it comes to voting, or you got, you know what I mean, a certain culture you bring from the South and take from the North. You got a certain uh, workforce, you know, that you have, you know, so there's certain pain, like you said, about, you know, putting into the art and creativity. And he created that, and you know, his his work was even, was, you know, big influential pieces in the Renaissance, whether it be Harlem or Chicago. Him being from Atlantic City, New Jersey, of course, you know what I mean? It had something to do, you know, real over over um, there real heavy. Um, but Harriet Tubman. I wanted to ask, what was some of the explanation on the the pieces within the piece? Like some if of the this, additions you added in the corner. If you see uh, my, more of my art, you can tell what's an artist and not. They have more than like, like, you know, you, you see some of his pieces mm -hmm. that, uh, like this is the Great Migration. That's uh, I, I don't want to get the title wrong. It was like uh, pool talk or something like that. Like they, they you know, pool was like mm -hmm. the black culture. Yeah, like representing yeah. that that yeah. urban it's, after hours mm -hmm. lifestyle. That, that's yeah. it. Like only we do. Or only mm -hmm. we like that. That's our fun time. That one right there. What's the um? It's the work. The shoemaker. The shoemaker. Okay. The shoemaker. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was going to put another. Oh, can you? You got me all like a lot <laughs> all over the place, but I put uh, just enough in there that you can get a, a representation of where their work fit in, mm -hmm. in our history. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody got their own voice, their own style, whatever the case may be. And another thing I learned at an early age, probably six, seven years old, I can basically replicate anything I see. Like, I've been able to do that all my life, and I never grasped onto it until I got out of college. That's the crazy part. Like, until I got out of college, that's when I grasped onto it. And I was like, you know what? Instead of me judging it or whatever case may be, like, oh, I can do that, and me having a big head about it, like, oh, man, bro, that's beneath me. No, it's, I know what I can do now. If I can replicate somebody's work down to the T, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it for a good cause. I can do it. I, I, and I, I like I, I watch artists that replicate it and they sell it and this that third like they sell actual like that, yeah. that, that's 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 wrong with me like if I got that talent I'm gonna use it in a way where it's it's up here like this knowledge is empty mm -hmm. it's something that can't be taken away from me. right so if I can do something visually that's gonna be stuck in your eyes mm -hmm. that's what I'm gonna do like so and there's so many different um perspectives that can mm -hmm. be you know developed. From it, which is part of the reason why I submitted, you know, these works to like the other writers mm -hmm. to create stories as well, because I wanted to see so many different perspectives. perspectives mm -hmm. You know, as I mean, looking, you know, through it's it's another opportunity to look through a variety of lenses. Mm -hmm. You know, um, while you know looking at the same piece, so in collaborative effort, you know, what I mean, it's, it's key in a lot of things. Oh yeah, I got I got more coming, but like me, like I thought about this part about two years before I even did. <laughs> That too, especially her. Mm -hmm. She took me about two years to do. So what made you want to dive into uh, Harriet Tubman and, and then, you know, 
Perfect. What, what makes you take the full two years? Her you know what I mean? Because some people can't stick with it. That's everybody's grandmother. Hmm. That look in her eyes telling you don't let it happen again. Mm -hmm. you, you, we all know this look. When the street lights came on, that was that look. Mm -hmm. we, it, it's, it's ingrained in us. Right. It's something that it's like only we can connect to. So I feel like me doing her, and I had to do it at a certain scale. If I would have done a small one, she wouldn't have that impact. Right. So I did Not for real, like because, that. and that was a key of me putting her right there. Mm -hmm. Because with this wall, you can't see nothing past. But right there, she drew everybody in because of her eyes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They felt like they was being stared at. Um, you have to, man. It's like one of those, like, you're in the corner of the mess or something, and you just hit your grandma like, you won't put that down, you just gotta, like, <laughs> <laughs> let me get over here. But with her, I feel like throughout our life, we always learn about her. We always learn about her, Martin Luther King, the same people we always see in that, that circle. That's mm -hmm. just get revolved and stuff like that. But it's like, then we connect to it, then we get it, then we even see if it's it's watered down or whatever the case may be right then we connect in a way that we we know who they are why they are why their history why whatever why why everything happened mm -hmm. and that's why i was like all right it uh in, in class um i was a little bit older than my classmates because they come out of high school i'm coming out of middle school so I already have a type of maturity that I'm looking at and glad like I'm trying to learn and so forth. So it got to a point where one day my professor was, he was going over all these people and he was asking the class who was this, who was this, man, nobody couldn't say nothing. <laughs> it broke me like, it broke, it was like, like man, y'all in here cutting the food, weird. this, that, the third, or whatever, and he knows she was. That's crazy. These 20, 20, 21, 22 year old, like, they didn't even know who she was, bro. That broke me. Like that, that was like one of those like I ain't even sleep. Cause I was just like, I was just trying to figure out how. <laughs> right. Point them out. Like, how you not know In 20 years? Who she is. Right. Out of all people who she is. That's for that. So it was one of those like, I wanted to start doing my own research. I wanted to start doing whatever. Cause it's like, I can sit here and go back and forth with people all day unless they physically see it. Mm -hmm. Or they physically feel it, or they they shocked from it, or whatever. They don't care about it. So here I am, day and night, day and night, day and night. Like, what do I do? How big do I go? How how extra do I be? How black do I be? How do you decide the things you want to include? You know what I mean? Because I mean, even her in the eyes and all of that. Like, mm -hmm. how do you decide the things that you want to include in it? In all honesty, this. When I did her, when I first started doing her, that's the first time I can honestly say, not lying, that I felt like my ancestors were with me. Like I felt like they was like, all right, all right, young man, you got this, you got this, put this over here, put that. Like it came naturally. I didn't have to guess this. I kind of had a guess because it was like more knowledge and so forth. But that came from another place. I can honestly tell you that. That came from somewhere where it's like, my great, 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 whoever I didn't meet or whoever was lost or whatever, they was with me. They was like, we know what you're doing. We're going to help you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when I got to that point, and I feel like with black people, when we get to that point, you got to accept it. Mm -hmm. If you accept it, or you're going to keep running away from it, you're going to keep being ashamed of it, or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. or you going to be ashamed of somebody that basically running for their life right. to make sure we present day, yeah, right. here. Not only running for their life, you know what I mean, protecting groups yeah. of other people, you know what I mean, making person. connections all up and down, you know what I mean, the East Coast, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, creating a pipeline and a network, you know what I mean, not having a telephone, yeah, like, you know what I mean, really like. We have to respect the type of, that was a grind, that was a, that, that was something that, we, man, we, we can't never amount to that. You travel in states. On foot. In comfort darkness with barely anything but your memory, your insight, your prayers, your stuff that modern day black people, we lost touch of that. Like, yeah. we lost touch of all that. And I feel like she trusted herself. She trusted her intuition. She trusted the people that she knew was going to be there for her. Even though she ain't meet them, mm -hmm. she knew somebody ain't make it, but they were going to make sure she made it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's how we are now. We know that somebody like 
gear for oils or whatever. Like we know we got that type of strength that it ain't physical. Mm -hmm. It ain't knowledge, it ain't whatever. It's whatever it is, it's whatever we got from it. And we just gonna have to give it back out. It's energy, we transition it. Like, so that's how, that's how I feel like fans go. Mm -hmm. But with her, I had to tell that story as if like, we weren't there, but how was it there? How was it like when it went about or whatever? Like, how many scars did you not see in her photos? How many like, you, you can't see emotion. Mm -hmm. And one thing we can't see, yeah, you can see a facial expression, but you can't see emotion. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't you can't see what somebody been through. Mm -hmm. So I feel like with painting this, like, you have the the forest up here, mm -hmm. representation of where she was running through and so forth, whatever. Up until I did this, I did not know that she was almost beaten to death at an early age or so forth. That's probably what went quick. They're like, oh, y'all gonna, gonna kill me anyway. Might as well, you know how we are. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how we are. Right. Be, I mean, we gotta be honest about that. So, and <laughs> stuff like that, I started doing my own research on like the, the different mechanisms and so forth, whatever that. I ain't even never heard of them. Up until I took black history in college, I ain't never seen that thing. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen it. Not no commercial, not no history book, nothing. <laughs> and that was like, that one in like, it, it kind of made me angry because it's like, damn, what else we don't know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, so as I dug deeper and deeper and deeper, it started clicking like, it's still life, it's still people, it's still tribulations, all that stuff. So with this, I don't know if you noticed, but she's pregnant. I actually did notice that. So. She's pregnant, she's holding that torch, she's holding that child, she's holding an empty bag. You don't know what's in that bag. You don't even know if she had anything in her bag or worldly possessions. Mm -hmm. That's why I left it out. Mm -hmm. It looked like that in your space, but it's not. Mm -hmm. That's why we face cut it. You don't know who who that she saved in the cover of darkness, because after she got them to where they got, they still had to go on the hobby. They still had to live uh, a life in the shadows and so forth because they were they're runaways. Right. So it's like, you, we, we don't think about stuff like that. When you sit here like in front of her, like, it just start clicking, 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 clicking. Just like with this. I don't know if you've you seen it here, mm -hmm. but in here, this is her point. Mm -hmm. In this eye, it's a noose. I don't know if you've seen it. I, nah, I didn't. It's a new scene here. It's been, I, I made it fake simply because it's one of them things you miss. It's one of them things like, 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 and look at her eyes gonna let it happen. <laughs> they catch you, they gonna hang you. <laughs> Modern day, same thing. They catch you, they gonna hang you. <laughs> That's just a black man's story. And we gotta be real about that. So, shit, it took a lot out of me to even do this because it's like, at a certain point, you, you ask yourself, like, is it going to come back on me? Is it going to whatever, blah, blah, blah? You know how it is. Mm -hmm. we, we can't get away with stuff like mm -hmm. whoever can. We got to, just like her, in the darkness, whatever the case may be, <laughs> until the sunshine is somewhere where we can reach it. Right. We always been like that. That's our history. So it's like stuff like this, I got to do, man. Like, it, it, it sent me to do. No one else can't do it. No one else that ain't got that feeling. They don't got the connection to do that. So I feel like people that for us will always be for us, we're gonna be for them. Mm -hmm. They ain't turn their back on us, we can't turn our back on them. <laughs> no matter how much it hurt or whatever case may be, it gotta be done. Mm -hmm. So it is it just stuff like that. Like like with the I don't even think like have you ever been to a cotton field? Yeah. We got um we got a couple of them back it home, but it, but it always blow my friends away. I got one of my homies that's from uh Trenton, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and he came. We went to once to Salem State together. And he came to Jacksonville with me one time. And he literally pulled over on the side of the road when he saw the cotton field and had to like grab some mm -hmm. cotton to like take back with him. He like I've never seen this before. It, it, it's like it's it's one of those like it ain't real until you get your hands on it. Like. Mm -hmm. I didn't see my first cotton field until I was in the military. And they took us out training in the middle of, I mean, bro, middle of nowhere. Guess what was out there? Nothing but cotton. 
I was like, bro, there got to be some uh, old land out here or something. Like, when I say, I've seen plenty, you know, seen plenty of fields, crops, all that stuff, but I ain't never seen that much cotton, bro. I ain't even know it still existed like that. But, you know, think about, bro, we got it all right now. Right. You know, think about that for a moment. Like, we try to hide it because it hurt. But you can't hide from it. We try to hide it, but you can't hide from it. <laughs> so it's like one of them things where you got to put it out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I just I just go with the flow and so forth. Now, other pieces that I will do, now that I'm in that groove or whatever, I'm doing my own research or whatever, this ain't it. I passed this already, it's here, it's out here, it's made. But what I do next, I gotta fuck the bar. I gotta keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Cause they gotta be heard, it gotta be felt. It gotta, might, might have to bend some people the wrong way. But we got some catching up to do. We got at least three, four hundred years of asking somebody what the fuck was that before we catch up. So, we gotta put it out there. Mm -hmm. it's, for, it's for education, yeah. it's for uh, yeah, to promote change. Of everything that happened, so why would we be ashamed to recount our history and put it out there that was been, that has been hidden from us? The truth, the hurt, the whatever case comes in between that mm -hmm. is there. Somebody telling us something now, hmm. just gotta put it out there. Hmm. I don't wanna go to sleep every night and somebody in my head talking to me like, hey, the lazy ass up, like, I don't want that. Like, hmm. So I just do what I'm told. I just right. do what I feel, I just do what I'm here for, and so forth. So we only got a short lifetime. Mm -hmm. We don't live forever. So if you that one person that you ain't scared to do it, you just gotta have to do it. Hey. So. Somebody got to do it. If nobody do it, mm -hmm. somebody got to do it. So I, I just look at it like, it. You know what the you know what the craziest thing about this, when it comes to, I I respect when another race can respect our history. Simply because some of us we don't even respect our own history. Mm -hmm. So for you to be on the outside looking in, and you respect something of this magnitude. You already on that. You, you already see it. Like it gotta be changed too. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I, I'm, I'm uh, before I love, like, like everything gotta be accepted. And I was just talking to my wife today about like the things that we don't accept or that it's like a taboo or how can I say it? Like it's like uh, I don't know. Like you know, certain stuff that. The fear has been ingrained in us so long, we don't even realize that we shy away from it. We just not get to the point that we're wearing our natural hair. We just not get to the point that we're accepting our skin and so forth. You know, you, you see how much hair my son got? Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised the reactions that I get out of people. <laughs> it be more older black people that's kind of like, why you got so much hair? Like like one of those. <laughs> Instead of like, oh man, his hair is so beautiful. It's like they, they still like, I don't, I don't know what it is. Like I can't I can't call it yet. Mm -hmm. I really can't call it yet, but I feel like we gotta get over that. Yeah. Whatever that is, we gotta get over that. Yeah, it's a lot of like yeah. get in your place, mm -hmm. tame yourself, be presentable, yeah. professional. Like what are these things? Yeah. What are these labels? What is this perspective you have? And um, yeah, why how would our natural essence, our natural, how we're mm -hmm. naturally uh, developed as a human being, how is yeah, that like, not correct? This, how is that this, not right? Like, how, how are we brought in this world under God, but we're not allowed to accept exactly how we are? Mm -hmm. That does not make yeah, sense to me right. at all. No matter who it is, black, white, gray, whatever case right. it be, if you came into this world a certain way, that's it. That's it, you accept yourself. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you lying for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. To who? Everybody, yourself, the mirror, whatever case may be, whatever right. comes, you lying. <laughs> Why you wake up every day trying to please somebody that don't give two shits about you? Right. Mm. I ain't doing that no more, man. Mm -hmm. I ain't doing that no more. Tell you, it's certain, they ain't even pride, they ain't even, man, they, they ain't even feeling like stupid. I don't know what it is. Right. It's, 
me personally, my own story, I had to get over that too. Cause I raised by my grandparents and so forth and like my, my grandmother, she gone now. But it's even certain stuff where I know what happened to her when she was younger because I asked other family members, but my grandma would never tell me what happened to her. She got scars and all types of stuff. My grandma 86 years old, just passed away last year. So you know she was born in 1936. Imagine what she went through. Uneducated, the whole night. She never really been in school. I why she always ingrained in me. Don't get my education. They can't take it away from me. They can't take it away from me. That's the only thing somebody can't take away from me because they can't see it. They can't see the knowledge that you got in. When I met y'all, I was like, man, y'all probably the sharpest people at that point in my life where I was just like, man, y'all own it. I ain't even have a question. I was just like, it, it was guaranteed y'all, y'all knew the direction y'all was going, y'all knew y'all purpose the whole nine. I ain't even have a question. I can't say that about the rest of my life. I can't say about the rest of the black people or whatever or that I met. It was always a question. It was always like, hey, bro, why you act like that? Why would someone else come around you and change up on us? On us? That don't make sense. <laughs> Let somebody else come around you. Lock tight, this, that. Get out of here, bro. They, they ain't you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it, it, it's, you know, we all got, we all got that part of us, like, especially all this shit that's been going on. Mm -hmm. With our government, with whatever. We all got it now. And if you ain't got it, you ain't gonna have it. <laughs> so, for us that do got it, gonna be on the train, or whatever case it may be, Going in the direction that we need to go. It's gonna be non-violent, but we don't mean no harm to nobody. Right. It's always gonna be non-violent. So we we got the rest of this, all, all these people in here, they done did it too. So mm -hmm. some of them got killed for it. Everybody had that, you know what I mean, go through their own thing. I, mm -hmm. I like the fact that, you know what I mean, we got this Richard Pryor piece up in here because he's the reason why Dave Chappelle Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He exists. For, for a black man to have that much unfiltered talk, <laughs> it's still like, mm -hmm. they, and I feel like they only respect him because he's real. <laughs> like I said earlier, most of us like, we ain't. Mm -hmm. We ain't all the way there. You got to be who you are at the end of the day. Or somebody going to call it, somebody going to see it, they ain't going to respect you for it. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's... I'm just being who I am. I can't be nobody else. Yet. As long as y'all know me, every time you see me, what, I'm covered in paint. <laughs> no, I ain't never, like, I think this clean, I think my wife watched it like yesterday or something. It's clean, you just got paint on it. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. I can't get away from it, so. It's the lifestyle, yeah, it's, it's, it's the way we live, right you know? So, uh, these colors, you know, I'm gonna get into my final, final two questions. You know, I wanna, well now I'll put it in one question. So um, about the colors you use, like, you know, cause I see a lot of these, you know, uh, the dark purple, the blues, mm -hmm. you know, um, and the framing, you know, like, you know, talk to me about, you know what I mean? The way you um, add these frames and, you know, the, the use of the colors. Now with uh, color, color is something that I'm still studying. Now, example, color provokes, evokes emotion. Mm -hmm. When you go into a restaurant, what are they most? Red, mm -hmm. orange, something like that. Yeah, blue don't, suppresses don't, appetites. Don't, don't that make you hungry? Like the red, the dark red, the maroons, all that stuff. Like you said, blue suppresses uh, your appetite. Green is like, it make you kind of giddy and mm -hmm. so forth. So when I started learning about that, I was like, dang. So even if I paint a powerful piece, if I use the wrong colors, I missed it. Mm -hmm. I missed it. So it's like with this, that purple, that's empty. That's all them things. That's that. That's that. That gut wrenching feeling and so forth. I don't know what it is about purple. It's so subtle. Purple is like no other color, but purple is probably the only color to me that got emotion. Hmm. If you think about it, not too many other colors got their own type of emotion. Hmm. So I feel like purple, and as you can see, there really ain't no more purple in here. Mm -hmm. Nobody really uses. They really use it. I don't know why they stay away from it. Probably because of how it make people feel. But that's why it, it, it's certain stuff like that. And with the, the framing, to me, 
just like we sit here talking about just that verb realizing stuff, whatever, an idea is always ongoing. It's always bigger than what initially came out and so forth. So with my frames, the idea is bigger than the frame that contains it. Mm -hmm. You can't put an idea in a frame and let it just be. So with me as an artist, like man, I don't, I don't, I don't too much got no, no rules when it comes to my artwork. Right. I'm limiting myself at that point. So it's like either uh, take a risk, do something different, see what comes of it, learn something. It might be a, a, a story in it or whatever case may be, but with this, it's stuck. I feel it fits with what I'm doing. Cause it's like everything I'm doing is to provoke thought. I'm not doing this to sell or whatever case may be. I'm doing this because it needs to be done. It needs to be thought about. It needs to be talked about or whatever case may be. It needs to be a conversation piece. Just like we sit here conversating, it needs to be a conversation piece. I can sit here and just talk about whatever, but unless you like, to the point like when you leave here, mm -hmm. you should be thinking about it. Absolutely. You should be thinking about like, damn, what was that for? What was that like? What, what, why does it keep, like, not bothering me, but why does it keep? It's supposed to be a continuum, yeah. you feel me? Yeah. Like, and I mean, and that was really the goal of creating this exhibit, you know, where to like people could come in here, like experience the beauty of art, right? Mm -hmm. But then also, you know, get some stories and some education with it. And some of these things that I connected to are like short films and documentaries, um, you can't finish it, you know, while mm -hmm. you in here. So the purpose is to take it home, you know what I mean? And this be an extension into your home and extension into the conversation that you have with your kids when you on the road or, you know what I mean, your family at dinner, you know, how was that exhibit? What are y'all thoughts? What are some of the things I have a quiz that I send out, you know, afterwards, you know, that way, it's a continuum, you know what I mean? What information did you retain? You know, maybe, you know, this might be a mix up. You know, I, I have the, you know, who was the artist that created the Great Migration series, but you know, I give them options like Jacob Lawrence or Faith Ringo, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Faith Ringo would be the wrong question. Nonetheless, Faith Ringo is somebody to look up, you know what I mean, to see who they are and, and what it is they created. This entire thing is a continuum, you know? So I, I appreciate you. Um, contributing very heavily you know to this continuum um and you know even as i give people tours you know you give me a lot of you know things to be able to include and speak about whether it you know is harriet tubman lavar burton but you know what i mean um, i get to dive you know real deep into you know some things about jacob lawrence you know because i know everybody oh yeah i definitely i get into all of this the gun in the bible the railroad you know and, and i play a guessing game with people over here i try to you know see who you know what i mean sees who but it's, it's also a conversation starter, mm -hmm. you know, as you mentioned, you know, we get to talk about it, we get to get in some education, you know, about her weapons, the shotgun and yeah. the Bible or her foundation yeah. in the word. Even with that, I did that in a way because it's like, we got choices in life. Mm. You either be Malcolm or you can be Martin. Mm. That's just how stuff is. So like, you can be violent or you can be peaceful. <laughs> that's, just, that's just natural law, that's nature. That's just how we naturally are. So I did that in a way where it's like, hey, she had a choice. I feel like if she was more violent, she would have been more reckless. She wouldn't have thought about it. She wouldn't have, she wouldn't have got everything done how she got it done. She would have lost some people. Because mm -hmm. if she was so quick to use that gun, somebody would have hurt her. She had a $40,000 bounty on her head. How much is that today? What about 2.8 million or something? So it's up there. I know the math all wrong, but like stuff like that, it's like she knew. She knew like I got this much to work with, but I'm gonna work with it a hundred thousand different ways. And that's I feel like we gotta go all right, because all of us gonna be put in the cage at some point in time. Just how you use what you got around you to get what you want and what you need. So um I don't know man, just I do a lot of thinking, man, like me going through war at a at an early age, I was already like I was seeing, I was studying people's how they carried themselves, whatever. Cause that, that was my that was my that's how I got home. I had to pick somebody apart right then and there to see if you're a good or a bad person before I walked past you. 
And I'm, I'm like that with everybody. I study everybody. I, I, I got to see how you carry yourself. If you a threat to me or not, or if you can help me out or whatever. You, you just got to read people like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like with me, after I got out of that and it became my PTSD or my, my sleepless nights or whatever, it ain't about to put me in a hole. So I thought I'd use it for the greater good. Hmm. If either you, you sit there and you use all that, like all of us got turmoil, all of us got pain in life and stuff like that. But what you know, most rappers, what they rap about? Pain. Mm -hmm. Most painters, what they paint about? Emotion. There's a quote that I like to quote, you know what I mean, um, two artists a lot, you know, and it's, uh, there's a quote I kind of said, what's bad for your heart is good for your art. Mm -hmm. You know, the pain, you know what I mean, the turmoil, any type of agony you go through, anything or relationships, family, trauma, all of that, you know what I mean? We hate to go through it, but what's bad for your heart is good for your art. And, and I say that's because, you know, like it gives you an opportunity to or it is an opportunity to express, you know, and, and share, you know, some things and become vulnerable. I mean, a lot of our favorite pieces have come from that, what's going on? I mean, that came from pain, you know what I mean? That came from agony, you know what I'm saying? I'm slipping, I'm falling, I can't get up. That came from pain and agony, you know? Um, even Nas creating the Illmatic, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It came from pain and agony, you know what I mean? Jay-Z on creating reasonable doubt, it came from pain and agony. You know, when there's no glorification of things, there's a story. You know, and people have to tell their story, share it through the written work, share it through literature, or whatever the case may be for our people, you know what I mean, to catch it. You know, so that's, and that's what this was all about, you know. So I, I appreciate you, you know, definitely uh, coming through, you know, putting up these these pieces. You know, you had to mount yours yourself. I ain't want that responsibility, you know, because it could have got ugly, you know what I mean? And you, you know, the Harriet Tubman 80 bands over here, Jacob Lawrence 12, you know what I'm saying, LeVar Burton 12, for anybody, you know, that wants to purchase these pieces. Um, you know, so before we wrap this, you know, let people know where they can find you and drop your cash out. Well, you can find me at the Oak Tree Four Instagram. My cash app is D Mathis Fair. My first initial, my last name, one S, D Mathis Fair. One S, no two, not two, one S. So, yeah, uh, anybody want to reach out to me, need some work done, any ideas, send them to me. I'm always good with ideas, like, so, yeah. That'd be it. That's a bit. Well, I appreciate you, fam. Oh, yeah.